What's good, y'all? What's the numbers TV? It's your boy Poe Rowe. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And like the video if you appreciate the content that Poe Rowe and What's the Numbers I providing. Today we're back with a profile piece. This one is on Stitch Loke. In this video, we're going to talk about his early years growing up in Brooklyn. Then we will speak about his entry into the gang and street lifestyle, as well as some of the well-known names that he's affiliated with. After that, we'll look at his time spent down south, where he was known to frequent for many years, before finally breaking down the complicated situation that currently has Stitch serving a life sentence in federal prison. Stitch Loke, real name Ronnie Mouchette, is from the Flatbush area of Brooklyn, New York. Growing up in and around the Vanderveer projects will be action-packed to say the least as Flatbush is one of the more well-known Caribbean neighborhoods in the city, but it also has a large gang presence. During the 90s, when Stitch was coming up, he would see and be a part of a lot as he became a member of the A-Tray Crips. Not to be confused with the West Coast A-Tray Crips, this was an East Coast version out of Brooklyn with the same name that was led by a guy named Biz Loke, aka Larry Padgett, who had ties with the West Coast originators. Stitch would make a name for himself early on, and it was known not to play with him if he wasn't ready for violence. He also built strong alliances with other crip sets around Brooklyn to strengthen the gang as a whole in New York City. Then, in 2001 at the age of 20, Stitch would be arrested for stabbing two guys on 42nd Street after he got into a late night argument with them. From there, the government says Stitch started dealing drugs and committing robberies with other members of his gang. Eventually, Stitch would take his show on the road and head down south, with Atlanta and North Carolina being two states that he would frequent a lot. He had plenty of connections through friends and acquaintances that it was easy for him to find some type of motion wherever he landed. Stitch would also be a familiar face on the club and lounge scene while down south and had enough pull at one popular spot in Raleigh, North Carolina that he would just go behind the bar and grab a bottle of alcohol for himself to drink. Stitch would link back up with Biz Loke once Biz came home from jail. The two would travel to different vacation spots like Las Vegas and Miami where they partied, ate good, and enjoyed themselves as a crew. They were putting on for the Crips as older members who were respected in the streets as being gangsters and also money getters. Around this time, Stitch was still doing his thing traveling back and forth from Atlanta to North Carolina then back up to New York. Still heavy on the party scene in all three places, he would now be mixing and mingling with rappers, promoters, as well as other street figures. He was cool with some bloods and wasn't really color banging. To me it looked like getting money and enjoying itself was Stitch's main goal. Then, in September of 2015, Biz Loke gets locked up for the murder of a rival gang member in Brooklyn. About a month later in October of the same year, Stitch would get locked up for murder also. And this is where things would take a turn for the worse for Biz and Stitch both. The story that would come out in Stitch's murder case was that in 2008, Biz Loke would go to trial on the gun case. During this trial in which he was found guilty in, Biz Loke would find out who he thought was snitching on him. A crip by the name of Nashua Johnson, better known as Nash, would be fingered as the snitch. Biz Loke would reveal this newfound information during his sentencing on December 30th, 2008, when he stated that he had confirmed from court papers that Nash had ratted him out. Phone calls were made between different members of the gang, and a day later, Nash was dead in Atlanta. The case would go cold for about six years, with no one being charged. But that changed when Stitch and his co-defendant got fingered by a snitch as the ones responsible for Nash's murder. Stitch's case would play itself out in court for a little over a year before he took it to trial. And in November of 2016, Stitch and his co-defendant were convicted of the 2008 retaliation murder of a federal informant. The evidence used at trial to convict him included cell phone data placing Stitch at the location where Nash's body was recovered and phone records showing that Stitch and his co-defendant spoke on the evening of the murder and that Stitch called his co-defendant repeatedly in the middle of the night shortly after the murder took place, finally making contact with his co-defendant to confirm that it happened. A snitch by the name of Anthony Braithwaite, who was also a Crip gang member, testified at trial that he witnessed the murder of Nash and that Stitch explained to him how he murdered Nash. He also testified how Stitch's co-defendant admitted to organizing the murder when he visited Bray Wright in prison. With all that evidence provided against him and a guilty verdict hanging over his head, Stitch would wind up getting sentenced to life in federal prison 
His co-defendant will also get life in the same case. Now for Biz Loke, he too will get sentenced to life in federal prison after being convicted of murder in aid of racketeering after his own trial. And with that, some of the older, more well-known and respected Crips were taken off the streets of Brooklyn for good. Would they be able to give some time back and get out one day? We will have to see as all three took their case to trial, leaving the opportunity to appeal open. But yo, it's What's the Numbers TV. There's a quick profile piece on Stitch Loke, real name Rodney Mouchette, out of Brooklyn, New York, Flatbush area, you know what I'm saying, a Trey Crip, Biz Loke, who else, Krill Gay, Squinge Loke. These are some, you know, names that are affiliated with that set in Brooklyn, the Vanderveer area. Now, Squinge Loke was his co-defendant. I didn't put his name in the real, the, 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 the video, the profile piece, because I waited to the end. Because, you know, I wanted to focus on Stitch. You understand what I'm saying? About Stitch's life, you know, certain things in Stitch's life that he had going on or that he did. I didn't want to, you know, I already put Biz in there. I want to put Biz and Squinge. The only thing Squinge and, 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 and um, Stitch had at that moment was they was in a case together. You understand what I'm saying? Biz was, I used Biz as a little, you know, background information so y'all can know, you know, about the A-Trade. He was the one who brought the A-Trades to Brooklyn and all that. So that's why I gave y'all Biz. But his, but his co-defendant was Squinge Loke. They saying Squinch Loke is the one that put the play together and got and got Stitch to take care of it. In the paperwork it said that they had somebody else there to take care of Stitch if he didn't take care of the situation, but I don't know how true it is. Sometimes they ask stuff in the paperwork, but that is in the paperwork. Now they both he was in London at the time, Squinch Loke, you understand know what I'm saying? So that's why Stitch did what he did out here on the allegedly on the orders of Squinch. They both got life in prison. They both got told on by Anthony Braithwaite. And uh, that's pretty much what it is going on with them. Now, as far as Biz Loke, Biz Loke got life in prison for killing the GD. And, you know, the Ali Rody shop, they had like a lounge going on at the time. It was some hookah lounge. And they was downstairs. They woke by each other. He shot a ball in his back and his head on camera. He got life for that. A few days after the killing of the GD, the folk member right on Flatbush Avenue in the roadie shop that turned hookah ball, they had a shootout Juve weekend, you know, by Ebbets Field. Allegedly, it was the folks and the same Crips going at it again. I don't know how true it is, but this is what the paperwork says and the, the authorities say. But they all got life, you know, Stitch, Squinge, and Biz. You know, some higher ups in the A trade out of Brooklyn, out of Vanderbilt area, they all got life in federal prison. Now, Stitch was heavy in the, you know, the North Carolina area, Raleigh, Durham, heavy, heavy in the Atlanta area. You understand what I'm saying? Heavy in the Brooklyn area. And he was moving around. You know what I'm saying? Psych Bike, Biz Low Kane, Mook Mula. You know, see some of these dudes that Stitch was affiliated with. Crips that wasn't his particular set. But he was affiliated with, you know, certain GSC dudes. He'll be out in the club with them. You know what I'm saying? Him and Psych Bike supposedly had a relationship back in the day before Psych went to jail. You know, these are just some of the other names of other big time Crips. In Brooklyn that got a name that they was all affiliated with each other. You understand? Now, like I said, allegedly, I don't know how true this is. I ain't been there in a while. But they saying Vanderveer flipped. Because allegedly all the snitching that was going on, they saying in the a trades, they saying supposedly there's a paperwork before. There was videos out about Bonton, who's a Krill Gates. They try to say he was telling. Then, you know, they try to say, you know, Nash was telling. You know, Anthony Bray, right? He was a crypt. It was telling. So, allegedly, there was a lot of telling going on in that Vanderveer area within the crypts. And supposedly, it flipped GD. Now, it flipped folk. I don't know how true this is. Y'all can let me know. But from what I heard, people telling me is that Vanderveer is more of a GD hood now. Now, it's a folk hood now. So, you know, I don't know. You get in the comments if you feel like clearing that up or not. I'm sure the crypts is around because, you know, it's a crypt area. But they saying the GDs is deep. In the via now So I don't know I don't know how true that is I ain't been in a while Y'all let me know If y'all got some insight on that But other than that This is a profile piece On Stitch Loke You understand what I'm saying We had 82,000 subscribers Hope y'all like, Hope y'all appreciate the video Subscribe to the channel Follow the Instagram Any promo or business Hit me at What's Numbers TV At Yahoo.com Follow my co-host Batty Bills And uh, but other than that Go listen to the audio podcast On all streaming platforms And we back before you know Man Road to 100k Paul Rowe We out of here Peace